Right. Uh, noting the hour of 7.01 and a quorum present, I'd like to call to order the planning board meeting of January 4th, 2022. Happy New Year, everybody. Um, we have approval of minutes. We have at 7.15 um, continuation of a hearing for Meadowbrook Commons. We have an a &R for 55 and 65 Farm Road. We have a complete streets update. We have a discussion of um, town meeting warrant articles. We have a discussion of draft compliance guidelines for multifamily districts under section 3A of the Zoning Act. We're gonna have maybe a discussion of ongoing development projects and town planner report. So I'd like to start by doing a few quick things um, and then because I don't wanna start something before 7.15. So has, any, has everyone had an opportunity with the holidays to review the minutes of December 7th? Yes. Yep. Everyone has? Okay. Um, are there any um, modifications to the minutes? Are you comfortable with the minutes, Robert? Yes. Gina, who else? What other members are on? I can't see who's on. Everybody's on now. Addie May just joined. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the planning board minutes of December 7th, 2021 as written? So moved. So moved. And do I have a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. I'm gonna do this by roll call. Chris is an aye. Is Addie May there? She is, she's muted. Okay, so I'll take that as an aye. Will? Aye. Frank? Aye. Rob? Aye. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna jump right to um, complete streets. Gino, would you like to? Talk about the complete streets update. Sure. The main update, um, as was presented at the select board meeting last week, is that we have been approved for our second complete streets project, which consists of building a sidewalk, yes, on uh, Sanger Street, along with uh, crosswalks over to, to connect to the pedestrian activated crosswalk across South Main Street and handicap ramps at the intersection of Saw and Sanger, South Main at all the corners. Um, so that um, we're very, very happy about that. And uh, there's still some paperwork to go through, uh, contract with the state and such, but um, that's moving forward and hopefully will be constructed this summer. So, um, I wanna do a couple of really quick things. Um, so I'm gonna jump around a little bit. Under, um, you want to jump to um, talking about streetlights, Gino? Sure. Um, <clears throat> with another grant that we uh, have received from Green Communities, uh, last week, uh, under the supervision of DPW, all, uh, well, it was not quite 133, or the original list was 133, but so almost 133 streetlights have been replaced with LED bulbs which will um, significantly reduce the electricity costs for, uh, for the town. Okay. Um, the charging station. Charging station um, has been in operation now for about three months. Uh, with, there's been about 27 unique users and over hundred charging sessions. So far, it's been free to this point. However, at the um, select board meeting last week at the, with the recommendation of the Energy and Sustainability Committee, uh, uh, there will be a charge uh, shortly to use the station. And it was decided to uh, at least initially start with a charge of 30 cents per kilowatt hour, which, which basically just covers the town's cost for electricity. And that's because you might think, oh, well, you know, I see kilowatt hour cost of nine cents or 11 cents uh, plus delivery card. But there's also 
demand charges for distribution and transmission. And the, the average, when you, when you prorate the, all the costs, it comes out to roughly 30 cents a kilowatt hour. So, so the town will just uh, barely cover its costs and um, um, that, that should be set up shortly, uh, hopefully by the end of the week. So if you, if you uh, have an electric vehicle and you'd like to get another free charge, <laughs> hurry up and uh, go to town hall and, uh, um, and, and then you can do that. But otherwise uh, the charge will begin very shortly. Well, I think, I think it's wonderful. I'm waiting for the gas pump to be, yeah. uh, to be yeah. put in for me. Um, again, we, we have a few more minutes. So I've, I asked Gino just to give a background where we have some new members um, um, about a discussion of 11 Farm Road. And so basically I wanted Gino to quickly discuss the date, the decision that the planning board came up with, a little bit of background and what is our um, projected outcome. If you could do that in a couple minutes, that'd be great, Gino. Sure. Um, so uh, the property at 11 Farm Road uh, did some work uh, in the right of way and, and removing a stone wall such and um, without a scenic road permit, which is required without permission to alter the sidewalk in the, in the town right of way. So the planning board worked with the homeowners and they applied for a scenic road permit after the fact on uh, March 10th of 2021 and there were a number of hearings and on July 6, 2021, uh, a decision was voted to um, uh, essentially leave most of what was done intact with a couple of exceptions. The stone wall that was removed was required to be uh, replaced, reconstructed with the exception of a small area where they had now built a, a walkway out to the street. Um, so it was agreed to let that remain, but the rest of the area uh, across the frontage, uh, the stone wall would be replaced. Also the sidewalk that they rebuilt uh, did not include a grass strip. And um, so it was voted to require that the grass strip be, there really wasn't much of a grass strip previously anyway, but um, it's desirable to have the grass strip. So, so part of the decision was that the sidewalk would be rebuilt or the uh, part of the si existing sidewalk would be removed to, re to enable a grass strip to be um, constructed there. And uh, Sean Colleen is joining the meeting now. Um, he may wish to comment further on that, but the bottom line is this vote uh, took place on July 6, but no activity has occurred since that time. So, um, so uh, I would just suggest that we do a follow-up reminder at, at least to, um, to the, um, the, the parties involved that uh, they need to complete that work. Okay, if I may jump in, you know, um, I'm not going to require a vote of the board for this. In all of our discussions, um, we basically spoke with their attorney. Um, so I think it would be um, appropriate if um, if Gino sent a letter to the attorney, just giving a, a very pleasant, soft ask saying, basically, we haven't forgotten about you. Um, we are also aware that they probably can't do much of the work this winter. I would have expected it to be done in the fall, but we were all busy and no one was really following it. Um, so if it's okay with the board, um, if someone is opposed to it, let me know. If not, I'm gonna ask you know, just to send a letter to the attorney and say, you know, you know, come up with a plan, get moving on this for us. Um, so I'll, I would suggest starting by asking softly and nicely, and then if we have to do something else later on, we can always do that. Does that seem appropriate, Gino? Definitely, yes. Yeah. Okay. We have five minutes. 
Is there something here you think you can hit in five minutes, Gino? Are there any reports um, with meetings with other boards? Uh, I think Stephanie, may, on behalf of the groundwater, or Tom Trainer, who's also here from the Groundwater Protection Committee, may want to mention their upcoming uh, presentation um, that's scheduled. I've forgotten the exact date, so I'll let them um, let them mention that. Well, if Steph thinks she can do it in four to five minutes, that's great. If not, we can do it after 7.15. So I'm going to leave that up to Stephanie. It's very fast. Tom okay. has organized on behalf of the Groundwater uh, Protection Committee a um, uh, <clears throat> Municipal Private Well Ownership 101 webinar. Oh, that's we great. found that a lot of the families moving <clears throat> into Sherburne may not have owned their own wells in the past, may not even know if they haven't paid attention during the real estate yeah. process that they have a well. And so uh, it's January 24th. Um, there have been some notifications on the town website. Um, anyone is welcome to follow up with me individually, but it's a Zoom, it's a remote session. And it's sponsored by um, a nonprofit who focuses on private well outreach and education. So is, is, is there any way to um, piggyback with that? Um, something about septic systems and basically what not to flush? That's not the focus of this particular, he has a set of materials that he uses okay. to share. Okay. So, but that's a good, uh, that's a good uh, thought for us to think about uh, moving okay. forward as well. Okay. Chris, 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 Tom Trainer, can I add hey, 10 Tom. seconds? Thank, of course. Uh, thank, thank you, Steph, very much. Uh, one, one thing, it, it's Thursday, the 25th Thursday of January. The 25th. Yeah, okay. seven, seven, seven to 9 p.m. Uh, it's posted on the town website. There's a pre-registration uh, re requirement. So you got to go to the, the web page and register to get the Zoom link. And yep. there is there is some slides. Uh, I've seen the slide set that address potential uh, well contaminants, including septic, uh, basic septic uh, uh, concerns. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. It's amazing that we haven't done something like that sooner, but thanks for taking it on. Our pleasure. I said Tuesday, Thank you. which is, it's correct on the website. It's a Tuesday. Okay. Um, uh, it Tom, is just to clarify, you said Thursday, the 25th, yeah, but, but I, I know, I know, the 20, I know the 25 is correct. <laughs> um, it was, it was on a, I knew it was on a Tuesday, so we're, we're good yeah. Tuesday, the 25th. Sorry for the confusion. Okay. So, nope, yeah. that's okay. You. Okay. Um, it is 715. So we have a hearing for Meadowbrook Commons, which the applicant has requested that we continue it again. So do I have a motion to continue? the hearing for Meadowbrook Commons to February 1st at 7.15. So moved. It's been moved. Do I have a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Roll call vote. Addie May. Aye. Will. Aye. Rob. Aye. And Frank. Aye. Okay, well, thank you very much. Hopefully, it'll be February 1st. We'll see. Um, I'm going to go right down the list now. I, I hate to start too many things um, if we have something at 7.15, but I'm going to go right down the list. So we have an A&R for 5565 Farm Road. Um, if it's okay with the board, I'm going to start by speaking about for five minutes, and I'd actually like to take the major control or discussion of this topic. So um, here we go. Uh, usually in and a and &R takes some review, but the submittal is typically straightforward and the board time spent on proper endorsement of an a and is but a few minutes. This has not been the case with 5565 Farm Road. Um, with a and &R's, time is always an issue because the board needs to render a decision within 21 days. And this was presented to the town on December 27th. A few people had asked me, could we kick it out into another meeting? And the answer is no. So um, I would like to start this discussion 
by stating that from a planning position, I'm very much in favor of this project. The greater Boston area needs housing and this project would be the first to apply our new open space subdivision bylaw as well as the new inclusionary housing bylaw. But unfortunately right now, that's sort of where my enthusiasm ends for this project. Um, independent of the ANR discussion, I do not agree with the measurement of lot width at the building line. I feel it's inaccurate and it plays seemingly to make some sort of a point. I don't know what point, but the, those lines are all over the place, not even close to what I would, or I think what the board would determine is proper width. Sherbin's legal justification for its large lots is the need for wells, septic systems, and safe offsets between them, as well as to afford protection to abutting properties. So when we're presented with overly engineered lot lines, we put into jeopardy the health of future residents, as well as fairness to the abutters. With the first ANR, which this board endorsed, to me, the law was clear that ANRs can be allowed with zoning violations. So even though I disagreed with those little four time frontage lines, it would be easy with that first ANR to correct it due, um, due to the applicants owning the abutting properties and there was a shared driveway so both properties could quite easily be brought into compliance. By allowing the non-compliant frontage on the remaining lots, we end up with an over-engineered lot lines and increased density that would be difficult, if not almost impossible to correct once structures are in place. The ANR currently as it's presented, I view this as a subdivision because three of the homes have inadequate frontage and access on a new private way. No matter how this board votes on this matter, it is my anticipation that it may be decided in the courts. Because of this, I would prefer not, I would prefer to vote without the board deliberating. So no board members say anything that may weaken our position. Having said that, I'm still in favor of the project, just not as it's presented. And I look forward to working with the applicant on a revised plan. So the question to the board, and again, I don't want to deliberate. I just, we need a majority vote and it's not the Chris Owen show. So I want you guys to really think about everything I've said and, and I hope you've had an opportunity to look at the plan. So the question is, do the proposed lots shown in the plan meet the minimum frontage requirements of the town of Sherbin bylaws or is the plan before us an attempted evasion of the duty to comply with the regulations or an obvious attempt to circumvent the purpose and intent of the subdivision control law. So I'm gonna present a motion. I believe in positive motions, not negative motions. So my positive motion would, I'm gonna to move to endorse the ANR for 5565 Farm Road. So a yes vote means that we think it's fine and we agree with the frontage shown on the um, plan. A no vote is to deny the endorsement. So I move to endorse the ANR for 5565 Farm Road. Do I have a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. If anyone has any discussion, I would like it somewhat limited. Do we have any discussion? Um, I would like to ask a couple of questions. Um, I, I have some issues with that. Um, I agree with you that I don't believe at least the uh, building lines are drawn in a way that corresponds with what I interpret to be the intent of the zoning bylaw. Um, I don't know whether if you don't want to discuss that now or get anything. I, I mean, we just have to vote based on what we believe or whether you want the person bringing the ANR to defend that at this point. Um, I, I guess I also have a question, a technical question about the law. 
to uh, maybe Gino can address this. The ANR um, says that um, the approval. Oh, okay, um, I, I'm I'm a little confused about the the page in the application where it says the undersigned believes that approval is not required because the plan does not constitute a subdivision. And they're saying because each lot therefore has frontage on Farm Road. Mm -hmm. So does that basically tell me that we're only supposed to be considering the frontage and no other requirements, including the building line in correct. evaluating this. That is, that is correct. Okay. Are there any other questions? So the motion is on the floor. A positive vote Chris, would be Chris. To, yes. Chris. I, mean, I, I had my hand up and I was waiting to be called on. I apologize for interrupting. Um, am I allowed to speak? Um, you know, my only my only question, um, Bob, is a lot of residents, I think, want to speak. And, I, and I'm and I want to try to keep this as. Yes, but this is my prop. This is my prop. This is my property and my application, Chris. And I'm asking I realize it. I realize this, but this is not a hearing. I understand it's not a hearing. Um, I'm just asking whether the chair will allow me to speak. That's a simple question. Please go ahead, Bob. Okay. So I I am really, really concerned here, Chris, about due process. You have just asked this board to make a decision on my application and have effectively told them you don't want them to deliberate. You don't want them to speak about it in public. And I think this is a horrendous violation of my due process. And that's all I have to say. Okay. Again, we have a motion on the floor. Do we have any other questions from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor of endorsing the ANR for 5565 Farm Road signify by saying aye. Again, a positive vote is means that you're for it and you agree with the frontage requirements as shown on the plan. I'm gonna start with Addie May. Will? Frank? No. Rob? Okay, a no vote means that we are not endorsing this ANR. Addie May. Nay. Will. Nay. Rob. Nay. Frank. No. And I am also a no. Thank you very much. Uh, let me see. Gino, town meeting warrant articles, Maple Street. What do you have? The, the article for engineering services for the um, design of the Maple Sanger Washington intersection has been submitted. It's going to appear as a capital budget item and um, it should be on the on the warrant. So, so that's a, okay. Okay, great. Um, the other warrant article um, that I would still like to discuss um, is lot width. And so if if the board, we, we kind of have been going back and forth. If, if the board would like, I'd like to have it put on um, for discussion on the meeting on the 18th. Um, I just want to get a sense of does the board, is the board happy with the current definition of lot width? Or is this a discussion that we would like to, um, to continue? Addie May, what, what are your thoughts? Uh, 
I still think we need to continue only because of some dis some kind of unintended consequences with some of the last discussion. Okay. Okay. And uh, again, you know, at one point I was rah rah about this. And then I felt like we couldn't even come to an agreement and we had enough stuff going on. So I thought like maybe we'd just pull it off and not have a warrant article. Um, so I just want to get a sense. So Addie May says yes. Um, Will, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think I agree. Okay. And and Rob, you, you still want to have this a discussion regarding lot width and changing our bylaws? Uh, certainly, yes. Okay, and Frank? I also agree that we should have more discussion on the um, topic of okay. lot width. Okay, so if it's okay with everyone, um, I'm gonna ask Gino to put it on the agenda for the 18th. Um, and cool. and let, let's sit and see if we can have some fun with it. I, I would like to have, I like the idea of the circle. Several people I spoke to in town that have been on planning board in the past also like the idea of a circle. Um, I'm not saying it has to go that way. Let's just sit and have a, a fun discussion and a robust discussion and, and, and see where it brings us. Um, I think if we can clarify things, um, I think that's fine. I think the current um, writing was goes back to 96 and, and they didn't want, they wanted to give guidance, but they didn't want to stifle um, people being creative. Um, unfortunately, I think we have to do a little bit of stifling, but I don't want to stifle it too much. So hopefully that'll guide the discussion a little bit. Um, does anyone have any other thoughts or questions? Chris, just a, a point is that uh, warrant articles are due Monday, January 10th. So can you put a, can you put a put placeholder in? in? Yeah, that, that was my going to be my suggestion, yes. Yeah, put a placeholder in and we've got plenty of time to withdraw it. Um, but I think whatever we come up with, we have to agree that the wording is as best as, because it's still gonna have to go to advisory. It's still gonna have to go to the select board and, it, and, then, it's, and then we're gonna have to have hearings. So we're gonna get plenty of input. So whatever we decide is gonna um, be like sausage. It's gonna change as we go along. But I think as a board, we should at least um, agree on where we sort of want to be with it. Um, so, Gino, you want to talk about the compliance guidelines for multifamily districts? Thank you, Charlie Baker. Gino, would you start that discussion? Has, any, has anyone received the paperwork? Yes. 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 All right. Okay, um, I, I thought that this would be uh, an opportunity to kind of start the discussion. Obviously, it's a very significant change in state law and uh, potentially a really, really significant change in town, town bylaws. Um, so it's, it'll require you know, a lot more discussion beyond tonight, but just to kind of introduce the topic. Um, the, the housing choice legislation, which passed last year, had a requirement that what they uh, considered an MBTA community should have at least one zoning district that allows multifamily dwellings by right. And it should be of reasonable size. And um, uh, it also, well, the, the the guidelines require, um, I should back up for a minute. So this passed last year, I think it was last January, some draft guidance came out around April or May, but the real guidance, and it's still in draft form, uh, just came out uh, like a week or two ago. And it has a much more specific guidelines on what towns need to do. And so they define a uh, multifamily district of reasonable size as one of a minimum of 50 acres with a density of 15 units per acre. However, that density, um, uh, it says uh, 15 units per acre or 
as limited by the Wetlands Protection Act and Title V. So Title V uh, limits density to one bedroom per 10,000 square feet. So that's a significant difference from, from 15 units per acre. Um, however, there are some things, um, oh, oh, and these districts are intended to be within a half mile of a, um, a transit station, either a commuter rail station or, or a bus, you know, bus station, uh, et cetera. However, if there is no such facility in the town or not one within half mile of the town border, then it could be in what's, uh, what's stated as uh, an area that's compliant with the state sustainability, sustainable development guidelines, which means basically a village or town center. So, um, uh, it raises a number of issues. Oh, 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 no, another important point. The, uh, it has the concept of unit capacity, and that's defined, it varies by type of community within the MBTA district. Since Sherburn does not have a commuter rail station, uh, it's, it's classified as an adjacent community. In adjacent communities, the unit capacity of the multifamily district uh, can be 10% of the total housing stock in the, um, in the community. And that's the lowest level. The, the ones that do have a station have a higher percentage. So based on our 2020 housing unit, 2020 census housing unit count, 1,562, we would need 156 multifamily units, a zoning district that could accommodate 156 units. The, that can be existing units, um, they would count as well. So the total has to be 156. They don't have to be built, it has to be zoned for, for it, and it has to essentially have the infrastructure to accommodate it. Uh, they define multifamily housing as a building with three or more residential dwelling units or two or more buildings on the same lot with, uh, with more than one residential unit in each building. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, there's also uh, temporary compliance. The full compliance is achieved by developing what they call an action plan by July 1st of 2023. And that plan has to call for adoption of a district by December 31st, 2024. However, temporary compliance can be achieved by one uh, briefing a meeting of the select board on these guidelines by May 2nd of this year, number one. Number two, um, filling out a, an online form that's called the MBTA community information form, which I looked at, it seems pretty, you know, non-eventful, just some, some details of information that shouldn't, shouldn't be difficult to do. And finally, providing uh, updated GIS parcel maps to Mass GIS. I spoke with the assessor's office, and that's already in progress. So we're already, you know, on the way to doing that. So, so essentially, the only thing we, we can easily achieve the temporary compliance. Um, so uh, I should mention that the penalty for not being in compliance is that the town loses eligibility for. Uh, housing choice grants, and it, we have already received one housing choice grant of $100,000 that helped fund the North Main, the new North Main Street sidewalk. Um, MassWorks infrastructure grants, which we don't don't have, we have not had one, and uh, a third third one, which is the local capital projects fund, which, to my knowledge, we have not had uh, a that type of grant. Um, 
So, uh, what else? I, I raise if for, for the planning board members. I I raised a couple of questions in there. Um, the, it's not clear since the definition of multifamily housing does not restrict, uh, does not um, prohibit um, age restricted units. However, the district must not prohibit age restricted units, but the definition they provide does not have that, that restriction in it. So it's unclear to me whether since existing units can count whether existing units that are age restricted would count toward the 156. Um, also, they um, they you mean like Woodhaven. Yeah, Woodhaven Abbey okay. Road, potentially Meadowbrook Commons in the future. Um, they say that a district of reasonable size is a relative rather than an absolute determination. And they, they specifically state that a multifamily district that's reasonable in one city or town may not be reasonable in another city or town. So um, I'm not sure how far they go with that, but does that mean if, if a town does not have infrastructure that there's some leeway on meeting the minimum unit capacity um, that's specified? And, um, Essentially, that's th those are the high points. So I just thought it would be good to start a discussion, start a, um, you know, presenting this information that's coming along, and um, we can have further discussions as we go along. The next step would be uh, to request uh, uh, to get on the agenda of the select board and make a presentation on uh, similar to what we just did tonight, but maybe a little more focused and okay. get them get them up to speed. May I make a few comments, Gino? Sure. Um, would it be possible um, for you to just, uh, by the next meeting, just to sort of type out a timeline of things that deliverables that we need to have done, like you said, the select board meeting, but there's also a time, there's also, we have a, a period of time to comment, to make comments, don't we? Correct, thank you for, for reminding me of that. We can comment on these guidelines. The comment period ends March 31st. Okay, so I always like to give the board homework. So I think by at, at the next meeting, if, um, if there's any thoughts, concerns, or criticisms that any board member can come up with, that might be a good time. And maybe as a board, we can, Put together a few comments, mostly because we're going to be we're going to have a lot of limitations based on our infrastructure. Number one, um, and then and then after we look at the timeline, then once we learn a little bit more about what's going to actually be required of us, after that, I would like to you know present to the select board, but not until we have our hands around some of these more obvious questions um, to the board. The other thing that Gino and I had talked about is whether or not we could sort of overlay this with the end of Coolidge Street. And, but my other thought is, I personally think something like this, if you want a vibrant downtown, maybe this would be something that would be better in the downtown area. And, and I'm not saying that's gonna happen, but these are discussions I'd like the board to have. Um, what are your thoughts about doing something like that in the downtown area, Gino, versus Coolidge Street? Uh, I think uh, that that could be could be possible, could be desirable. Um, it's something we really definitely should look at. I mean, if 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 the rental units, if they ever go in at Coolidge Street, would count toward our 156, well, then it would make sense to do it there. If it because our requirements would probably be pretty close to being met. If it doesn't, I would actually like to see this. In the downtown, if we're always talking about a vibrant downtown, if you want people walking around and, and, and it's, it's 16 and 27, and maybe at some point there could be, you know, the small regional bus I and mean, who knows what will happen, what could happen in the future. I mean, this is really stuff that is down the road, not so much next year and this year. Um, so these are discussions. These are things I'd like the board to think about. 
And um, so if we could have a timeline and if there's any thoughts, questions and comments that we could have, um, particularly how it would affect Sherman, um, you know, we can continue this discussion at the next meeting and let's see where it goes. Is that fair, Gino? Absolutely. And by the way, okay. Frank has his hand up. Okay, Frank, please. If, if I could just add an underscore to your point, if we, if we did look at the Cooley Street, um, if that were an option, the, that location is in the neighborhood of about one and a half miles from the West Navy train station and about one and a half miles from the Framingham train station. Correct. There's also, there's also that uh, small Metro bus that is also in and about 1.2 miles from that location. So if yep. a bus stop were placed in and around that Coolidge Street, that could take um, residents to those uh, rail commuter rail uh, stops. That could be really interesting for 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 that population and could really meet this in the in the way that the state is looking for as, as a thought. Well, you're right. I mean, you're right, and and I think what you're saying was actually the intent of this. Um, that, that's what they want to do. They want to make it easier for people to use public transportation. Um, but again, you know, these are, these are all things that as a board we have to discuss because at some point we're going to have to pitch um, a different zoning district. Um, does anyone else have any other thoughts, Rob, concerns, or criticisms? Rob has his hand up as well. Um, Rob, please. Yeah, just a question about this um, Whitelands Protection Title Five, I guess um, I'm assuming that that refers to like um, septic systems for individual residences. But don't when when there's like a a dense development, doesn't um, you know they put in some kind of treatment system? Does those limits still apply, or you can build a much higher density then, right? You could. Yep. But. It could all it could be smaller units and, and they could be uh, you know based on title five as well, I would imagine. I don't know enough about it. This is this is the first time I've seen this as well. So again, these are all if you know if we have questions, this is the time to to comment again on on issues that are specific to Sherman, because I think general things, I think the state's gonna have a pretty good um, handle on. But we have to really look at requirements based on what we can actually handle from an infrastructure point of view. Addie May, any thoughts? Yeah, just um, I just want to. I know that we we're just doing preliminary first discussions, but I'm just looking at the when Gino, when you were talking about the um, ten percent of Sherborne's housing count and needing to. We need to have within one district 156 multifamily units, or does the entire town of Sherborne count then as a district to meet the 10% multifamily? The, the the can be sub districts, and um, it, at least one district needs to be at a minimum of 25 acres, and of the 50. And no district can be, no sub district can be less than five acres. So yeah, it can be split. Okay, because I mean, I guess you you were also you 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 brought it up that whether forty Bs count because there's nothing in here that says multifamily has to be affordable. So we've got the fields at Sherborne, our duplexes. We've got uh, Whitney Farms are mostly duplexes. I mean, I, I guess at some point we've got, you know, it's not the same percentage battle that we have with the affordable numbers to get multifamily dwellings throughout town, right? I mean, you've got Kendall, um, uh, Sherborne Meadows up on Kendall Avenue. I don't know how many, I guess I'm just wondering like, where where are we realistically um, potentially already in compliance if we're just looking at how many multifamily. But it's not, it's not, um, it's not uh, 156 in, in total in town. Like I think the fields, we would have a hard time justifying that as being in, a, uh, you know, it, 
close oh, okay. to transit so it all has to be close within to the center. Right. Um, but right. yeah, but uh, others, yeah, I think you know we might be able to um, um, have more than one district. But but I but I think the in, I think the intent of this is to encourage more multifamily units. Yeah, I think there's an idea that multifamily would lead to naturally more affordable housing. I think that was the intent. Of Correct. course, we've seen lots of luxury townhouses for years, and that's been the, the general dilemma with this type of bylaw. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's another big ask for the town, right? This is, a, this could be potentially a headache. But, but all it looks like is we just have to sort of choose where we want it and, and sort of be, uh, be willing to accept more of this sort of housing. The, the question is, you know, where would you, where would you want to put it? I mean, we don't have to provide, I don't think, any more than that, do we, Gino? No. And we don't have to, it doesn't have to actually be built. We just need to create the district where it could be built by right. Now Marion's got her hand up. Marion? Marion? She, she's I'm muted. muted. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Um, it sounds as if this uh, this law, this state mandate, is a work in progress, and they're asking for input. So I, it seems the first uh, the first job, if you like, would be to figure out at what parts of it are open to input, and what parts you can give them feedback that would be relevant to a town like Sherburne that would make it more easy for Sherburne to comply. And before yeah, you worry I, about how you're going to comply. Yeah, I would imagine we can do both initially. I think we can ask a little bit and politely tell a little bit. Gino, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I, I suspect there are going to be many other towns similar to us that don't have the infrastructure and are going to be commenting on that. So there might be some changes in that regard, but I, I don't know. Okay. You certainly can so, quick provide that input. Okay. So um, if you want to continue this discussion at the next meeting, um, again, I'd like to see a timeline of, of things that as a town we need to do. Um, let's think about how we want to present it to the select board. I think we have to do a little bit more homework before we do that. Um, I also don't want to waste too much time because their, their, their calendar gets kind of booked up. And, and that looks like an easy deliverable. Um, but we also have to really figure out what's going to be required of us. And, but, but let's start with any comments that the board might have. And, and we'll talk about it at the next meeting. And we'll have Gino put together a letter. Does that sound fair to everyone? Yeah. Do you know, is there a, um, a, a link or uh, a connection of some kind to those open comments so that we can? But no, that's what I, um, I can send you the complete. Uh, I sent the summary kind of. Uh, I can send the. Did I send you the complete guidelines, draft guidelines? I'll send that anyway. Yep. And I'll send a link to the the state website that has more information as well. Okay. And 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 just with a little reminder, um, if anyone has, it's not homework. If if you look at it and you don't have any thoughts or questions, don't feel like you have to come up with something. But if um, but if there's anything that we would like to add to do this to the discussion. Um, I think it would be, I think it would be welcomed. So let's put this on the agenda for next meeting and, um, and do a little bit of homework between now and then. Um, maybe this Thursday, Gino, um, when we meet, if we're still gonna meet this Thursday, maybe we'll sit down and we'll concentrate just on this, if that's fair, a good use of your time. 
So if any if if any other members want to come, as long as it's only one of us, um, please feel free to join us on Thursday. Oh, one other um, point on this: there is a uh, webinar schedule to review this in more uh, detail, which I plan to attend. And if anyone else is interested, uh, you know, let me know, and and uh, I can send the link for that. Would you, would you would you send it to everyone, Gino? Sure. Yeah. And then people, if, if they have the time, that's great. If not, I'll watch it as well. And then and then we can at least report to the board. And um, OK. So we'll talk about this on Thursday. We'll put it on the agenda for next meeting. And, um, and let's get going on it. Let's at least fulfill our obligations to the state. So. All right. Updates on any ongoing development projects, Gino. Um, not really, no. Uh, I, I, my understanding, I know that Coolidge Crossing was on the agenda for the Conservation Commission last Thursday, and I believe they were expected to close that hearing. But um, uh, I don't know that for a fact. So that's okay. moving along. Um, but I, I'm not aware of anything else. Any other updates? How about the um? Is, do we have Courtney Eck? Can she give us any status update on that? Is she here? I mean, she's showing up. She may be have her video off and maybe busy. So I can give an update. It's Michael Lesser. Oh, hey, Michael. Hi there. Uh, there was a, uh, they asked for a continuance. Oh, we were supposed to close at each meeting, but there were some issues with COVID. And then, and now some of the uncertainties about the uh, Meadowbrook uh, was, was noted in an email to us saying that they wanted to even continue closing it all out, uh, even, even though we're supposed to do that on this Thursday's meeting, but it's being continued another two weeks. Um, so we're quite close to closing it out, but they've asked for continuances. Uh, so we're just waiting to see at this point. Okay. But we're close. All right, good, good. Thank you. Um, anything else, Gino? No, that's all I have. Okay, and um, uh, Vin Gately. His project. So you're sure there's a door going in there? Yes, I saw. Okay. His hands. Okay. Okay. Um, you might. I don't know if you want to tell the board about about that. Not that it really matters, but um, I, I sort of drive around. I make sure people are doing what we asked them to do. Yeah. Well, in under construction, the the building on the end on the right side of the road. Um, because of the way they had the, uh, the, the, I don't even know what to call it. It's not plywood mm -hmm. anymore, it's that green board. Um, they had it over the opening for the door, which made it look like a window. Okay. Uh, but the, uh, you know, the plans clearly show that there's, there's a door there as well as a little porch, covered porch area. Okay, so for would you give a little background? I don't know if the new members know what you're talking about. Yeah. So when the project was uh, before, which which, pro which project do you know? Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Fifty nine North Main Street, 12, okay. 12 single family homes on a condominium lot um, with a common septic system in the in the oval in between the, the houses. And um, so the, a design feature that was requested and complied with was that the, the end units on each side would have a uh, facade facing the street that look, looks like the main facade uh, with an entryway and, and, and such and design features to, to make that the, the, uh, the main facade facing the street. And so um, that's, that's what this is about. It looked like because of the way the construction was going that there may not have been a door on the front of that one unit. 
and this that's the last unit by the way and and it's an affordable so when that's when an occupancy permit is granted to that unit we can uh, add it to our subsidized housing inventory that gives us one more unit But you know, the first unit that went in, it has the door on Main Street. It looks great. Those people, they put pumpkins out there, they decorated it. I mean, it looks wonderful. It really does. Any other updates on development projects, Gino? No. Okay, so next meeting, we're gonna talk about 11 Farm Road. We're gonna talk about lot width and we're gonna talk about, um, the compliance guidelines for the multifamily districts. Is there anything else that um, any of the board members would like to bring up at next for the next meeting? Um, no, but I know that I think, Bob, did you, I know that I was a few minutes late. Did we get the, we'll get a placeholder for, um, I think it was just got at the last meeting, the placeholder for the engineering question for the Maple Washington intersection. Sorry, okay. I just. We don't need to, that was already agreed on, right? So we don't need, need to do anything further other than getting that notice to the select board office, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Already, yeah. Well, I was going to ask what's, what's actually gonna be in this? I mean, what are we requesting specifically? It'll be requesting kind of like we did with Pine Hill Road. It's requesting the um, funding, which we're, I can't remember if we actually, I think we're working still to get the quote for what the engineering would be. And the engineering then would give us the, we'd go to the town meeting with that information and that would then help um, the next specific, stage of discussion. But, you know, the specifics of what we are, what are we engineering? Um, I, I believe it's an, the suggestion from the complete streets was an engineering of a, a roundabout. Okay, because I haven't seen that. I looked through a whole bunch of material you sent me and there's all, there's like six different recommendations going all the way back to um, 1995, including a roundabout, including traffic signalization, including just uh, reworking the intersection slightly, and um, I just how did how have we come to I, I I don't know how we come to the decision here that it's definitely going to be a roundabout. Is that did the planning board decide that at some point? In, it was on the complete streets prioritization from 2017. Okay, said it, um, that a roundabout would be the best. Um, would be the likely best. I guess the question is, is at the time, I think, well, the, well, the question becomes, what does the engineering potentially look like as far as whether people will, I think the, the discussion back, aside from cost, I think the reason it hadn't been pursued previously was potentially cost um, and also scale of roundabouts, I think, and, um, regulations, DOT regulations have allowed for some smaller, some different designs that doesn't, don't require as large of a roundabout that allow for um, aprons that can be, you know, trucks can mount the center. So that's where, you know, the engineering would be done and would show how big something would need to be. And that would, you know, so first quest, first step is getting engineering and nothing would be done with that engineering without the second step, which would be asking for if it, you know, if it does town agree that that's the right plan, but engineering needs to be done in order to know what the, I guess, construction cost would be. And then everybody would look at that engineering and say, yes, it's a good idea or no, it's not a good idea. Okay, so this would be like a sort of a 25% engineering or something, it's not, an absolute detailed engineering plan that you would do as part of preparing a bid package? I think it would need to be, I don't think it makes, 
I mean, the engineering to, I mean, we don't have any underground infrastructure. So I, as far as, far as cost of engineering, I mean, what we have in the, the, you know, the basic sketch from past projects we have already, but there were issues of whether they were maybe too big. And I don't know that it, I mean, I, I don't know what everyone else on the planning board feels, but I don't think it makes sense to do another sketch that doesn't really tell us what we'd really be looking at for next steps. It's, it, it's cause I can't imagine cost once you start, if you if you really need, I mean, we're doing the survey work to just to get our surveying yep. area done, but. Could I, I comment? Yes, please. Uh, Chris, would you mind if I comment? Please go ahead. Yeah, um, you know, I, I was I was there when we went through the complete streets thing, and I will recall that uh, many of their some of their recommendations made sense to us, and some of them didn't. So it wasn't like a mandate of things that needed to be done. Uh, the safety of that intersection is a big uh, is a big issue. But I had the same question as Rob, actually, same the same two comments of Rob, as Rob. Uh, at one is, you know, at what point does the town decide whether to go th through uh, with a really professional, detailed engineering of, of a roundabout? But I think what you're asking for now is something in between a sketch and a full engineering job. Because I think the town doesn't seem to seem doesn't need to see the details of the of a full engineering job of something that's going to be built in order to make the decision as to whether they they want to see that right. at, at that intersection because it has been controversial you know it does uh, impinge on the properties of the of the town uh, campus. So I, I understand, I guess the question is, there's a couple things going on right now. If, if we say, okay, we're going to town meeting asking for a, a partial engineering, which may not, you know, it's, it's just relatively small amount, I'm guessing. I mean, given the, the full complete engineering for the Pine Hill access road was under 80,000 and that had stormwater management light, electric, a lot of other things going on for a complete full, um, you know, complete full for this will be less than 80. So if you say a 25% or 50% engineering, are we going to find that we down the road are doing duplicative work? I don't know. Um, the other issue is right now we've got, there are mass DOT funds in the pipeline potentially to be asked for with the um, federal infrastructure bill. And it's my understanding there's towns already queuing up their projects. So if we say we are asking, we're going to town meeting for a partial engineering and then getting a partial engineering and then we're saying, okay, next year town meeting, we go for a full engineering. Are we now saying it's three years before we go to town meeting and ask if there's support for the project. I guess I'm, um, I'm looking at the timeline. Yeah. It was, oh, it, 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 yeah, it was, it was my, it was my understanding, um, mostly because of the next round of complete streets funding. And we wanted to utilize that to the maximum that we were looking at a more complete engineering study. That was, that was my understanding of the discussions that I had with Sean. I just, uh, you know, thinking about town meeting and how this is uh, managed to get the town meeting vote that you would need for an engineering study, you kind of need to have the town on board. You need to have the town to want a roundabout. And that it's kind of a conundrum, you know, how far do you take it in terms of visualizing what it would look like in well, order to be able to get the town on board? Well, 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 that, well that's true, Marion, but that's why, so initially, it had been brought up that we could use other funds for the engineering study. And, and the only reason that I pressed to make it a warrant article was because if the town 
said they didn't want a roundabout there, I didn't want to say that, oh, by the way, we spent $40,000 on an engineering study. So, so this is sort of an opportunity, if the town doesn't want it, for them to say no before we've spent the penny. So that was sort of, sort of my thought, um, because I didn't want other money spent on something so specific if it couldn't pass town meeting for the engineering. Yeah, that, that doesn't make sense. Of, yes, I agree, but I still, uh, where is that? Where is that debate going to take place? You don't want it to take place at town meeting. Oh um, no, it'll, it, we'll, we'll have multiple hearings. Well, again, it'll go to it'll go to advisory, and so we're going to get a pretty good sense um, of how advisory and um, the board of the select board. And I mean, we're going to get a pretty good sense of how people feel. And quite honestly, a lot of people have said to me that planning board should do something about that intersection. So, so this is really, again, most things that I do are, are in a response to lots of people asking. So, so, so that's how we came up with that. And, and this, um, the DPW director is, is very excited about the prospects of cleaning up that intersection as well. I think Eric Johnson has his hand up, Chris. Oh, see, see, I can't see. So Gino's supposed to tell me when someone has their hand I, up. I was about Eric. to but Mary and beat oh. me. See, it's easy for me to blame you, Gino. Eric, <laughs> please. Okay, how do I do this? Thank you. Um, and I'm sorry I missed the very beginning of this conversation. I'm, I'm, um, I, I sat down just recently. Is this request, is this a capital funding request to um, do the design to 25%? I think I heard someone, I think it was Rob talked about taking this to a 25% design. Um, he did mention that. Um, what we had talked about is a design study for a roundabout, the engineering for the Maple Street intersection. And, and, and I had suggested early on that we should bring it to town meeting and not use other funds because it's an opportunity to pitch it and see see what the residents want it, because if they don't want it i don't want to i don't want us to spend the penny if if the town's not going to be for it and what's the value about to get for the study what's the value of the request the amount of the request about you know um addy may i was trying to i thought i think we're um I don't have that number in front of me, but I like we were saying, it's going to definitely be less than a Pine Hill Road because there's no lighting, there's no storm water really. I mean, there's beyond there's, there's okay. I, th I think this, in my opinion, I think this uh, this may be worth it as long as it's a study and it's probably limited. Pine Hill is eighty thousand dollars, and that's a full fledged design. Um, because I think one of the things that really should be done before you go before a design request before town meeting is determine if it's going to get tip funding. This may be eligible for you know, transportation improvement projects under the MPO and mass DOT funding. And I think that's something someone spoke about that earlier. And I think that question should be answered first, talking to the MPO rep and not to put Marianne in the spot, but I think Marianne might be the actual town's desig designee to deal with the MPO. And I think if you get that, then that'll drive the project. That'll completely drive if you can get on the MPO list. I mean, the advantage is it'll actually, you know, the state funding will help it go through it'll be good to get state funding but it might take about five years for the actual construction and best case scenario unless the mpo gets infused with the, with the arpa funds if that makes any sense if this is yeah. under 50, under fifty thousand dollars a study may be worth it because i don't know if a study maybe someone who knows this better will know better than me has a study been done to determine like do traffic counts in different directions and determine if an actual roundabout is warranted or not does anyone know i believe i believe so i mean we have several years of studies um and i believe they led to saying that a roundabout was the best scenario okay. i believe though the design of roundabouts when the big study was done in i think it was around rob what was those like 2009 or even earlier well i made some notes on it there was a bunch of studies around 1995 and traffic safety recommended a traffic signal there. Uh, VHB did a study and they recommended a roundabout and Mass Highway had some quite negative comments about the applicability of a roundabout to that intersection. 
Right. But there's also been a change of, um, I mean, in, I know I, only recently I drove through Swansea, New Hampshire, which is sandwiched, it's a major commuter route between um, Massachusetts and Keene, New Hampshire, and they put in a roundabout in 2015. And actually the New Hampshire DOT website has a lot of information about roundabouts and the ability to make smaller roundabouts, which means less land um, use, but smaller roundabout designs that would still allow trucks to get around. Um, Eric, just a question, I, is it the same as kind of complete streets funds and everything else that TIP funding would not apply to any engineering, right? So Mike, is that correct? To the best of my knowledge, yes. I thought there was a small, there were certain small town exemptions where small towns maybe get design funding, but in my day job, I never deal with that. I only deal with big towns and big projects. You know what I mean? So traditionally, most uh, MPO or TIP funds, you're correct, is construction only and does not fund uh, designs. So the community has to take it right through the, um, what's called the 100% uh, you know, design for bidding. So I guess just based on kind of what I've seen the last couple years um, and with the Pine Hill Road and other scenarios where we've kind of done half work and then thought, oh, maybe we could, we could go for some state funds or other or, or federal funds, but we're not so-called shovel ready. We don't have the engineering in place and we've lost out. So that's the argument to, and, and also then having a full engineered helps us really know is something really gonna work rather than being in a situation where we have partial engineered and someone says, okay, yeah, that looks good, but will it really work? If you want to get something, I don't want to find a shovel ready, but something that's ready to get on the tip and be analyzed and scored and put on tip, you got to get to 25% design. So it'd go beyond a study. It'd be you would already determined if you have the counts. I understand there have been some studies done in counts there that a traffic um, roundabout is worthy or, or appropriate, I should say, in this situation. Then you take it to 25%. And 25% then mass DOT kind of goes through a prescribed process of 25% hearing. And you take it to, I think the next one is like eight, 75 or 85%, and you have that hearing, and so on and so forth. And a 25% design is actually pretty designed. It's almost it's most of what's on the drawings and no specs. I don't know why they call it 25%. It frankly is uh it's more than that. But that's probably what you'd want to fund. And if you want to get it, like I said, on the tip and get the state interested and get people ready for the funding, because then then it looks like you're serious and it looks like you're um, ready to uh, to do the actual project. Mm -hmm. As you indicated, I'm not sure what the cost that would be. It'd just be like, you know, it wouldn't be as much as other projects because there is you know no underground utilities here. I don't think you're increasing impervious area that much. They probably wouldn't have any stormwater requirements. Um, Eddie May. So I just, I'm sorry, I was just pulling up. <clears throat> I understand the um, estimate for <coughs> engineering is um, that Green International has come up with a preliminary estimate of um, 33,840. That's engineering plus pre-bid construction, which I guess I'm still not clear. I haven't fully analyzed what that means. The, the, maybe Eric, that means something to you. Yeah, it sounds like a full design. It sounds like we have talked about pre-bid. It sounds like it's taking it all the way, which for a small project like this may be appropriate. I gotta be honest. You know, I don't know how much more detail you can put into a roundabout. You know what I mean? It's not um, one of the advantages of these smaller projects, you know, like half a million dollars or less is sometimes the MPO just finds money so they're dealing with like, you know, five to $50 million projects, something comes under bid or it's within the margin of error and all of a sudden you can do a roundabout in Sherman. Okay. Yeah, so it um, looks like they broke it down. The engineering and design estimate is 19,630. And then the construction phase kind of initial is uh, unless that's for this, just want to make sure it's not sidewalk. It looks like they've got that. I don't know how they could have that set, but I guess it's just the oversight is at 14,000. So total direct expense, I guess, total labor, total. I guess, I mean, 
Yeah. Yeah. That's like everything getting it into pre construction and they would have labeled this. I'm sorry. Just because we were talking, there's been talk of the sidewalk and then there's talk of the two different conversations and if, if you want, I can look at it off, offline. It might be putting the sidewalk for the complete streets. It might be looking yeah, for complete street funding. I think that's, that's well, what they're doing. Well, with all respect, that's what I was going to suggest. If if Rob, Eddie, May, and uh, and Eric could could talk in the next couple of weeks and and figure out the best way to present this, is that fair? That sure. sounds that sounds great. Yeah, because um, those and, numbers, I think I'm conflating. I think I'm mixing projects. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. So I mean, I mean, so that way you, you guys can just chat offline, and then and obviously whatever you whatever you do, obviously you run it by Sean, and then just give us an update of our next meeting, and Gina will put it on the agenda. Is that fair? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, is there anything else that anyone would like to talk about this evening? If there's no other business, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. I know I started the meeting with a very weird conversation, everyone, and I appreciate your patience. All those in favor, and we don't have to do a roll call. Any, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And, and in the meantime, Thursday, if anyone wants to come over um, town hall in the afternoon and start working on some of this, that's great. If in the meantime, you have any questions and you want to um, send them to Gino or thoughts, criticisms that you want us to look at, that would be great. Wait, Chris. I, it, yes, Gino. Because it's, because it's remote, it does have to be a roll, roll call. Okay. Okay. Addie May. Aye. Will. Aye. Rob. Aye. Frank? Aye. And Chris is an I. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.